Oh, good evening, everybody. So tonight we're going to continue our little emergency shutdown system. And if you watched my last video, you noticed at the very, well, I guess if you stuck along to the end of the video, you saw that everything worked except I came across a problem when I was editing. So let's see if we can resolve that problem, finalize this emergency shutdown system, and tidy everything up. So let's get started. So thank you to all of you who tried to, you know, tell me what you thought the problem might have been. Honestly, I, I almost missed it. You can see we've got the inverters on right now. We can see the blinking light on the Tygo transmitter. And if I hit this button, the inverters go into a fault state. They stop outputting power. And then there's no more light blinking here. The Tygo has lost power. And that works great. And yes, we get our servo alarm. As a side note, there were some comments in the previous video. This is a locking switch. So it is not a momentary switch. So once I pressed it down, it actually locks in the downward position. I actually have to twist to unlock it. And that resets everything. Inverters are back on. And our light on the Tygo transmitter is blinking again, signifying that it is sending its signal. Now here's my problem. In the event that I actually turn off the inverters for maintenance, since I am running this relay that controls the Tygo off of the inverters, if the inverters are off and I hit this button, nothing happens. So in the event that the inverters are actually turned off for maintenance and somebody has to hit this stop button, PV will not stop coming into the building. Now, I think it's going to be a pretty easy fix. But again, it was just something that I completely overlooked and didn't even consider. So what we need to do is we're going to have to change the assistant and we're going to have to rewire and not utilize that relay in the servo. And let me show you what we're gonna, what I'm talking about here. So jumping back over to the computer real quick, we see we've got our two programmable relays. We're actually going to remove those because we don't want the inverter to control when the Tygo turns off. Because if we do, anytime the inverter is turned off, Tygo, the Tygo cannot be turned off. So we remove those and then I want to come into the safety switch and we're actually going to reverse this temperature sense input. Because what I need to do is I need to utilize both sides of the emergency stop switch. There's a normally open side and a normally closed side. Right now, the normally closed side is what's being used for this temperature sense switch. So I need to switch that to the normally open side. So when it's open, the inverters will be on. And when that stop button is hit, that connection is broken, then the inverters will turn off. So we'll push this back up to the inverters. And now that is, that is actually up at the inverters and it's thrown an error right now. So we need to come in here and reverse this switch. These need to go from the normally closed side to the normally open side. And so now that this is wired to the normally open side, the inverters are back on. And if I press the green button to close the normally open switch, then the inverters fault. And if I let go, they come back on. I think I got a loose wire in there somewhere because it took a minute for them to come back on. But now that we have the normally closed side open, what we're gonna need to do 
instead of utilizing the relay in the inverter on the normally closed side, we're going to take the power from the power supply, 12 volts, and we're going to run it into this normally closed switch. And then have it come out of the normally closed switch and come over to the Tygo. So I'm going to pop this fuse out so that there's no power coming up into the relay. And we're going to remove these wires coming off of the inverter, out of that relay. And then we're going to wire them up into this normally closed switch. So we've got our switch wired up, normally open side for the inverter. So when this gets closed, the inverter turns off, normally closed side for the Tygo. So when this gets pressed, the connection opens, disconnecting the Tygo. So if I press the button for the Tygo, you can see it kills the connection for the Tygo, and I let go, it reopens it. And if I press the button on the inverter, the inverter disconnects and I let go. It seems to take a second for it to come back on. So what now when this emergency stop button gets pressed, both of these will be pressed in and everything should shut down. And then even if the inverters are turned off and I come over here, and I press the emergency stop button, the Tygo still turns off. So if you're not familiar with how the Tygo TS4-A-F modules work on your solar panels, I kind of mocked up a scenario to show you exactly how they work. So we've got our module here on the left. We've got two wires on the negative side and two on the positive side. And one wire is marked on each side for the panel and one is marked on each side going back to your charge controller. And so we've got our leads heading outside to the panel, and then the longer leads are coming over to my blue eddy, which is gonna act as our charge controller. We've got our, tiger, our Tygo transmitter with the core on the negative side. The black side of the core needs to point towards the panels and towards the module. And then I have a desktop power supply, which is going to be our power supply for the Tygo module. So when I turn this on, it'll supply 12 volts over to the transmitter, which will energize the core and allow this module to close and send power through to our Blue Eddy. So let's turn on our power supply it'll supply 12 volts and you'll see it's pulsing. We come over here and we've got our blinking light which signifies that it's creating a signal and on our blue eddy, it's a crummy day outside, but we've got 10 to 12 watts of power coming in. And of course, yeah, there we go. 10 watts coming in to the blue eddy. And if I turn off this power supply Within 30 seconds, this module should open and the DC input should go away. And there was an audible click when the DC went away on this. You probably can't hear it on here, but there is, is a high-pitched whine coming off of this, and the pitch changes once it opens up and power is no longer able to go through. Now, before I turn the camera on, I did go about doing two things. Now, the power line's going to the buck converter. I did run through this grommet and come down here and tap onto this Lynx distributor, the end of it. I didn't want to. I was hoping to add another set of bus bars over here, but I just don't have any room. Honestly, I, I just need to get another Lynx distributor and stack it over here and, and do some, some rewiring here. The Lynx distributor would make things work a whole lot better than, than what I have right now with just things stacked on the end. 
Most of it's low current, so I'm not super worried about it. But then I also ran that core over there through the negative sides of each of the PV lines. It really, if you go to do it, it really makes a mess of wiring. I didn't want to shorten anything because I want to be able to uh, redo this box in the future and put a metal box in. So I didn't want to go shortening any lines, but it, it makes a mess of things. And then I added this little DIN rail right here so that I could hang the Tygo transmitter on that and tie it directly to the core. So it's, it's late right now. I think I'm going to end up waiting until tomorrow to add Tygo modules on that small charge controller so that we can run one final test before I spend all the time adding all the modules to all the panels. Now it's a beautiful sunny day today. Not used to seeing that. So we're gonna, <laughs> haven't had to worry about the sun glare for a long time. So we're gonna look at adding four modules to one array right now. The first thing you need to do is obviously go through and turn off that array so that you don't have any PV being pulled by your charge controller. Now I am gonna add modules to this section here and this section here. Now, you're not supposed to add one module to multiple panels, but these are really low voltage panels. They're not on the roof. I don't really have to put them on here anyways, but I'm, I'm going to. So I'm gonna do these three as one. You got, what, 20, 40, 60 volts. I mean, they're 100 watt panels. And these are TS4-A-F. 1500 volt maximum, 700 watt maximum output. My connections are actually on the wrong side, so they don't actually reach. So I have to get a little creative right now. I'll go through and fix it later, but this will be at least a good test. I got these modules off of, yeah, this horrible rat's nest, yuck. Don't worry, it's not gonna stay like this. I will, I will fix this. But I got these modules off of uh, somebody who was selling them on the DIY solar forum. And I ended up getting, I think, 16 of them. But most of them did not have these silver clips on the bottom. And so I ended up contacting Tygo. Tygo support said they, they don't sell them. They said I had to contact all their vendors. So I contacted all vendors except for one of them. And all the vendors told me that they couldn't, couldn't get them. But one of the vendors actually emailed one of the marketing guys at Tygo. I believe his name was Mike at Tygo, reached out to me and was able to get me all these clips for all these modules. So thank you very much for that, Mike. So I've got them dangling for right now. Again, I'll have to probably mount them to the cross members on each section just because of the way that the panels are laid out. So let's head inside and try out our emergency stop button, see if it works. So the array we wanna look at is the MPPT 15035. We're currently bringing in 220 watts. So that's the one that has, should completely shut down when I hit the emergency stop button. So let's see if it works in three, two, one, now. So our inverter shut off and it should shut off the 15035 within 30 seconds. Two watts, zero watts. Voltage all the way down, no amps. Awesome. And then if I reset the switch, wake up, and there's our voltage. Yes! So I'm working on the last one right now in the string, and these bigger panels are so much easier to work with. So first thing we do is we connect the short cables Apparently the second thing you do is you drop your phone underneath the solar panel. All right, so we've got our short cables connected to the panel itself. And then we just slide it up until it bites in and locks into place. 
Then we take our remaining two long cables and connect to the main line. And I do need to get some, at least for these longer panels, I need to get some UV rated zip ties to clean up some of these wires here. Everything on the ground has Tygo modules on it. Once it gets warmer outside and things aren't as brittle, I'll go up on the roof and put the modules on the last four up there. Well, I'd say that was another successful day. We were able to do our full proof of concept test with the modules on the panels themselves. And then I was able to go through this evening and add all the modules to the panels on the ground, as well as go through and tidy up some of the wiring in here. So I was able to get my wires inside and then they run down all in the trough. And then everything is over for the Tygo transmitter over there. Probably get a few zip ties and take care of some of the small lines still. And then figure out exactly where I'm gonna go with this. Now, the modules on the bigger panels were a whole lot easier to mount on as opposed to the modules for the small panels because I wasn't trying to put three panels on one module. And again, that's, that's not recommended by Tygo. They're recommended to have one module per panel. So don't follow what I'm doing. I want to thank those that uh, commented on the last video with ideas and suggestions. There were a handful of people that commented and said that you could add a shunt trip breaker onto the battery side so that you could completely disconnect the battery side from all of your inverters, your charge controllers, everything with one fell swoop. And I had actually looked into that. I had priced out you know, a, a 200 amp shunt trip breaker. I had also looked at trying to purchase shunt trips directly from Nader, and they wanted me to buy them in bulk, and I don't need that many uh, shunt trips. <laughs> Just a handful. And again, thank you to Mike at Tygo for sending me those clips for those Tygo modules. It's, I mean, once you know how to do it, it's actually a pretty simple setup. I mean, my entire last video was just going through trying to figure out how I could do it, trying different things, you know, bringing you along in the thought process. But then this video, you know, I knew what needed to be done, had to make a couple of changes, a couple of fixes, but it was just fast, 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 fast. I think the longest thing is, you know, trying to mess with running the wires. And I would recommend if you're looking to do a roof mount, just put the modules on now because I have a feeling it's going to be a pain. I have to go up this spring and pull the panels up to put the modules on and deal with all the wiring underneath. It was hard enough dealing with this stuff on the ground, so do it ahead of time, save yourself some grief. But with that, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch up with you later.